In this video, I'm going to use Harvey, Wireman, and the inside of Harold's head. So on Harvey, we can see the left subclavian and right subclavian. This coming in is the external jugular. This peaking underneath from the sternocleidomastoid is the internal jugular. Once both jugulars meet the subclavian, it becomes the brachiocephalic vein. So right brachiocephalic vein, left brachiocephalic vein, and when they come together, they make the superior vena cava. Now we can't see it on this model, but the vertebral veins are kind of sneaking down behind, and they also join the brachiocephalic veins. Now remember, I'm not saying left and right all the time, but everything will have a left and right, except for obviously the superior vena cava. Feeding into the external jugular is the occipital vein, and feeding into the internal jugular is the superficial temporal vein and the facial vein. So the internal jugular vein is receiving some blood from the superficial parts of the face. More importantly, it's receiving deoxygenated blood from the brain. So these dural sinuses are carrying blood within the meninges and going to drain the brain. So on the inside of Harold's skull, we can see the superior sagittal sinus. That superior sagittal sinus comes down to here which is the confluence of the sinuses. A confluence is where things meet up. It's called that because the occipital sinus comes to here. And there are some other sinuses not involved in our curriculum, which also meet at the confluence of the sinuses. So the blood from the confluence of the sinuses will flow out through the right and left transverse sinuses to eventually reach this, which is the sigmoid sinus. So remember, sigmoid is anything that's making like an S shape, transverse is side to side. Also meeting the sigmoid sinus is the superior petrosal sinus. It's superior petrosal because remember this part of the skull is the petrous region, the rocky ridge. So the transverse and superior petrosal sinuses meet up with the sigmoid sinus and the sigmoid sinus drains into the internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein begins at about the same area as the jugular foramen, so right before it exits the skull and goes onto the neck. So on Wireman, we can see the internal jugular here, and it continues down until it meets the subclavian to turn into the brachiocephalic vein. So internal jugular, subclavian, brachiocephalic vein. So the external jugulars are here. That's external jugular, that's external jugular. We can also see the vertebral vein which will look better if we look at it from the back. So 
So these are the vertebral arteries, which are easy to pick out because remember, they come together to make the basilar artery going up towards the circle of Willis. And if you can find the vertebral arteries, the vertebral veins will not be far away. So here it's external jugular, vertebral vein, and internal jugular is the most medial. If we look at him from the side, we can see where the occipital vein meets the external jugular vein and where the superficial temporal vein and facial vein come to meet the internal jugular vein.